President Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced plans today for closer military and intelligence cooperation. The president called the U.S.-Japan alliance a beacon to the entire world. CBS's Weijia Zhang joins us now from the White House. Weijia, good to see you. How exactly do the United States and Japan plan on working together to counter China? Well, Ed, the announcements today really center around these two countries' militaries and finding ways that they can cooperate better so that they can fend off a potential uh, adversary. Although I should say that the president did not explicitly talk about China or its president Xi Jinping at length. Uh, those two topics were certainly the backdrop and the entire undercurrent of this uh, discussion today. And so to that end, they are looking for ways to, as an example, produce a defense weapons together. They are also trying to bolster their military command center in that region to see if there are new ways that they can collaborate. And so all of this, as you mentioned it, is because, as we very well know, every piece of the president's foreign policy is attached to Beijing. And so as Beijing continues its offensive, especially in the South China Sea, the president wants to show that it is getting as many allies as possible in the region and sort of sending a message without saying it that we're prepared in case we have to be. And, and to that point, they're, they're having a, a third leader join them tomorrow, right? That's right. This is going to be the president of the Philippines, Marcos Tamaro, Fernandez Marcos Jr., and he will be here for a trilateral meeting. This comes as in that South China Sea I was just talking about, China has been aggressive towards Philippines Coast Guard, and they're also worried about how China could try to control the seas there. And they're really focused on economic uh, collaboration and growth in the area. But again, Ed, as you know, this points back to China and what they can do as a show of force, if you will, uh, before anything actually happens. And while the president wants to keep as much focus as possible on Asia and the Indo-Pacific, he did have to talk today about the war in Gaza. What did he have to say about ceasefire negotiations? Well, it's really interesting, Ed, because just yesterday here at the White House, hostage families expressed frustration that they seem to that, you know, when people mentioned ceasefires and a temporary ceasefire, they were not hearing that being linked back to their loved ones, hostages being released. And so that is exactly what we heard from President Biden today, reminding everyone what's at stake. Take a listen. The new proposal on the table, Bill Burns led the effort to uh, for us. We're grateful for his work. There's a now up to Hamas. They need to move on the proposal that's been made. And as I said, uh, we'll get these hostages home where they belong, but also bring back a six-week ceasefire that we need now. President Biden was also asked about recent comments he made during an interview that Netanyahu is making a mistake in his handling of the war in Gaza. And he was asked explicitly whether the U.S was prepared to condition aid. But the president sort of talked around it. He talked about all the things Netanyahu is doing to open more humanitarian corridors, all the promises he has made to better protect civilians and humanitarian aid workers. So President Biden said, we'll see. Weijia Zhang at the White House. I guess the other interesting thing is that the Japanese prime minister brought along, what, 200 more cherry blossom trees to be planted here in Washington? That's and then right. Two, and two Japanese astronauts get to go to the moon with the U.S. whenever we get back there. So a uh, pretty extensive day for them. Yes. And it will be capped off with a very extravagant state dinner tonight where Paul Simon is performing. So, you know, a lot of work and a lot of pomp and circumstance, which is why we love covering state dinners, Ed. Don't we? That's right. One day we'll get invited to one. Lisa Zhang, good to see you over there at the White House. Thank you.